What is up, Overwatch community? My name is Trips, and welcome back to another episode of Watchpoint, the show where we talk about everything Overwatch related. Once again, we have on the show Yiska. Hi. And Vulture. Hello. We got a few things to talk about. Luckily, you know, just like every week, Blizzard releases little tidbits for us to uh, mention to you guys. You might have seen them yourselves. Maybe you like to join in the argument with us as to whether, you know, they're good or bad, yada, yada. So to start off, like pretty much the past couple weeks, is patch notes. That's not the most exciting thing, but uh, we feel like we'll get it out of the way real fast. So number one, new map. Uh, I will go with Lin Leos or I Ilios. I think it's Ilios. Ilios. Yeah. 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 So have you guys played all three points of it? Yeah. Uh, Actually, really? Yeah, I uh, got a, uh, two rare opportunities to do both points. Uh, the second one, actually, we had a a good group of guys on the second. On the we lost the first point, and then the second point, we asked the guys if we could win on this round, so we could see the final round. And they were nice enough to allow us to to take the point and then go to the final round, so we could see that again. It's pretty cool. So mm. I think the first one is. Just the point itself is a box with two inches on the side, one in the front, and then one that drops off in the back and a staircase that goes around it to the lower level. But there's no, like, inside lower level. There's just, like, a balcony. And then the second point is another square with a couple entrances. But the main point of it is that there's a giant pit, like a 300 Leonidas pit. Mm -hmm. You go down, you're dead. <laughs> So, obviously, a lot of the, like, Lucio and Farah and Junkrat, those type of people that can bounce people around, makes it a lot more fun. And then the third map, I honestly, if I try to think of it, I don't know if I can think of it. The control point, the third control point. It's, uh, it's sort of like a, a ruins, like a, um, like a temple of athens type ruins and it's very tight and kind of small it's all kind of close quarters except for like a sort of a, in, a square indentation in the middle kind of like a mm -hmm. coliseum in some ways that now you fight that, over the point yeah now that you bring that up it makes it reminds me it's honestly i don't know if you guys played much of gears of war but it reminds me of a map from gears of war one and it's like ruined area and right in the middle of it there's like almost um uh why am I blanking on the science? It's he's a scientist, but they like it's like a paleontologist, but for ruins. I can't archaeologist. There we go. It's like an archaeologist dig site, and you can go in a little bit underneath the ruins, and there's like a bridge off to the right or left, depending on which side you're on. It's pretty cool. I like it. I like that it's like a pit, and you can shoot down into it, but also that it's like a skinny map, so people like Farah or even Junkrat a tiny bit. If you get up high enough, like right after spawn, you could shoot right into the point. So. I found it. It's probably the most claustrophobic of the maps that I've, I've played yet. It's really tight and really yeah. hard to see what's going on. It seems like a Genji playground, another Genji playground. Um, you know, just climbing over the ruins and then jumping people in tight quarters and getting out. Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to comment on how it actually plays. I've played five <laughs> levels since the patch, like five levels worth of gameplay. That's how much is that? Ten hours or something? Maybe. Yeah. Two, two hours per level, yeah, could be. I haven't get, gotten the map yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've not played it once. Like, I'm, I'm getting upset. That's a bit but ridiculous. I, I think I've played it three times. Okay. I think it's one of my more favorite maps right now. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's pretty. just because it's new, but it is very pretty, it's very bright. It's white and blue, which is... I don't think we have any map that's white like at all the first the, two two maps have a lot the play style is very cool because there's a lot of places to jump up on and shoot down on and it seems to be favor like a junk rat type play style or oh, yeah. um maybe pharah too a lot of fun um, but it's just another king of the hill map no uh no new type of game type to come with it so the next is going to be career profile reset so that's all that's going to do is just wipe all of your kills, hours played, that stuff. You still have all your stamps and all your uh, skins. 
So I don't think it's that huge of a change. I don't know why they did it exactly, but I wish they would have kind of wiped everything. So, I mean, people who are like, I know people who are almost at 200. They might have been pissed, but I kind of want new skins. I want different skins. I don't know if I like the legendaries that I have. <laughs> yeah. Um, health pack placement has been adjusted across all maps. I don't know that I've been, that I've noticed any huge health pack changes. That's usually something I pay a lot of attention to and I haven't noticed. Well, Maybe they moved like obscure ones that we never use. I don't know. I haven't played Temple of Anubis yet of uh and it looks like they made some adjustments there. Maybe that's tied up into that. Um but Maybe. the maps I have played I really haven't noticed. Alright. Payload size has been adjusted to ensure that all heroes can move around them in their locations. All this means is like Diva and Reinhardt, all like the bigger tank guys, especially on I want to say Dorado, when you like go under the bridge, when they're when you're on attack and you're pushing under that first like arc, you can't fit on the side of those, so you can just yeah. get stuck. Um, yeah. Numbani, significant art changes have been made throughout the map. Okay, so, uh, Temple of Anubis, new route has been added to reach a second capture point. So when you're in the Temple of Anubis and you're staring at the second capture point entrance. Where on the left hand side where there was that like jump over pathway block, they took that out. So you can just run right through. Oh. It kinda it kinda opens it up. So Yeah, actually I think I liked it actually. You liked like the it, block or you liked the change? I think I like the change. I'm not sure if it's it would was I mean i I I'm not sure if it is the fix that this map needs. But uh, it makes it a little bit more open, and especially for characters where you can't travel vertically, like mm -hmm. most of the time tanks um, and, and stuff. Um, yeah, that, that opens up a new you know pathway to pressure the, the location basically. And it's also like getting into this these uh, into the room on the left side is actually already quite an accomplishment, right? Like, yeah. if you're in there, you have a mad pack there, and you can basically aim for the, the uh, exit from the point. So that always feels like, okay, I can wait here for a little bit so my team catches up from another flank, and then I stab, right? Unless someone is contesting me. But even then, I probably have a good, pretty good chance because I have the mad pack advantage there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, I use it sometimes. Um... For instance, if I was playing Offensive Widow or something, I would go on there, not to have just one angle to contest their Widow. Other than that, I don't know, Hanzo is also pretty good for that. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty they, cheeky. They also increased the Temple Gate on that same point, so the middle section. They, I guess they increased the width a little bit. I didn't notice any, anything cool. Play modes, don't really care about the AI, custom game stuff. Yep. Um, Progression rewards, just a couple new stamps. Um, or, I don't know why I keep saying stamps, but sprays. The taunt emotes are now, like, each person gets an emote automatically. And then you can unlock from there. A bunch of new skins that don't need to be named. Miscellaneous stuff. End of match accommodations. Mercy. Has been recast, apparently. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah, it's a new voice, and it's actually worse, I think, <laughs> than it was before. Yeah, well, they keep doing that, dude. Like, like uh, they they brought the actor back into the studio, go like, yeah, do this, do the better job, and then in the end, they bring back the old Lucio voice too, right? So, yeah. I don't know. I don't like it. Uh, actually, there was a bug for some reason in my client, which made, made it even worse, is I updated, and it was the German Mercy sound, dude. It did that for me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I th I thought it had something to do with me fixing my uh, battle and client or reinstalling and being German, mm. but apparently not. Did you enjoy the German? I did. You learn I something? just like. <laughs> I think I heard it like three times in one match, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like that was so. Yeah. It threw me off. Yep. Uh, so the hero balance changes. I don't think they did anything too crazy, but. Well, I always get um, surprised. Rip tire ultimate charge increased by twenty five percent, so he's just gonna get less rip tires because they did get a buff last patch. 
Lucio health reverted from 150 to 200. Sonic amplifier damage reduced from 200% projectile slightly reduced. So he doesn't do as much damage, I guess, as, because he's a support. I, I think that's, that's a great change. Less damage and harder to hit with his weapon. His weapon was easy to hit. I did a video yeah. a while ago, and it, it it's like really easy to hit with his sound sound gun. Yeah. It sound barrier. Does... Sorry. Sound barrier ultimate charge cost increased by twenty five percent. So less sound barriers. Yeah, that was also needed, right? But that hits Lucio in a way that's not critical for him, right? Yeah. No. And also, like we addressed it last episode, but it basically. It's almost more like a community patch other than a, a competitive patch. Okay, in the sense, okay, obviously the HP buff is huge for competitive, but the things that they changed about his offensive output don't really change too much in competitive simply because how Lucio is played. It's played more yeah. safe, it's not dueling all the time, right? Unless actually yeah, your whole team is dead, then you might as well. But uh, yeah, it, like for competitive, that's actually what puts him back on the map again. Okay, and May Endothermic Blaster alternative fire, so the icicle speed increased by fifty percent. The fire rate increased by twenty five percent. So it you you lose that like super long lag time by a quarter, and ammunition cost from forty five or forty to twenty five, which it was originally fifty. So they effectively reduced it by half, which is amazing because now you can get double so you can get like what eight no she has 400 so you can get 16 off is that is it 400 or is it 200 i think it's 200 oh. isn't it if it was 200 before yeah that makes more sense because you'd get four icicles yeah yeah so it'd be eight you yeah get eight, eight total and it's pretty big so it's still i've been seeing a lot more may is like just lobbing shots with the icicles from far away <laughs> I played a couple of good maids, and she seems really pretty strong. Surprisingly strong, I should say. Mm -hmm. Those icicles, uh, they they hurt. <laughs> hopefully, I think we'll she... see some like I don't think she's gonna be in competitive, but hopefully, we'll see like someone bust out like a uh, like a counter may for some I don't know, like yep. if too many reapers get picked. Yeah, something like this. Like, the thing is. Um, she's now actually very fun to play in pubs because of that. Mm -hmm. The only thing that keeps feeling weirder and weirder to me is like, how do they justify keeping, like the the shot on the secondary attack? Like mm -hmm. at this point, it might as well be a primary, right? It feels weird for to me that that I'm shooting with right click. Like, where, where yeah. do you ever do that in a game, right? Oh, and you're McCree. <laughs> well, no, I think he means. Well, you're just not like, aiming then, right? <laughs> yeah. But then, what would you what would you do for the blaster? Put it on uh, well, auto secondary. Or something, yeah. Secondary, yeah. I would like that too. That makes a lot more sense. Um, yeah, because you're always going to be using most of the time using the icicle, and then that takes some good aiming, and you're not worrying about your your middle finger doing the shooting in that case. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And last but not least is Zenyatta. Orb of Harmony and Orb of Discard will no longer stack with each other. And Transcendence Ultimate Charge Cost reduced or increased by 25%, so less Transcendence. But so if does that mean that if Harmony and then Discord get put on the same, usually Genjis, then I think it, it's what? Like, I think it means two Harmonies or two Discords. I think that's what it's talking about. Yeah. They, oh, were playing dub they were playing they were playing double Zenyatta all weekend and it was ridiculous, man. How I uh, even, how I got I didn't even notice that. Yeah, how how are you going to play Genji <laughs> <laughs> against Genji with two healing orbs? It's just ridiculous. <laughs> like I don't know that that had to be nerfed in some way, yeah. Okay. And in the same way, two Lucios aren't stacking healing uh, auras. I think it's just fair to have. Uh, Two Zenyatas not stacking on the same target, right? Also, Discord on the same same target, dude. It's like you make you make a, a Reinhardt a big loot pinata, right? Mm -hmm. So, Basically. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that Good is change. that's the end of the patches. If I can get my goddamn 
Oh, that's why. I don't know. Num lock on. But that's the end of the patch notes. So now for the big information. I don't know uh, how long it was going, like the ad was going. But from my knowledge, how this got found out was somebody was on the IGN website or getting ads from IGN. And they had their ad block off. And they noticed an ad that said Overwatch pre-order now release date May 24th. And was like, uh, what the hell? And posted the subreddit, and then later, maybe just a little bit later, Blizzard was like, oh, yeah, we were just about to announce it. So, they have announced Did... that... What's up? I, I, I actually don't believe gaming companies anymore that do this. Like, <laughs> come on, how often can, can this leak like this, right? Yeah. This is more like, okay... Yeah, IGN, uh, about that uh, release date, do you want to, like, have some free clicks and shit? Yeah, sure. We, we're going to release it. Okay. So, oh, everyone's loving it? Oh, I guess I guess we're going to officially announce it. <laughs> oh, people, people actually hate it? Yeah, IGN, dude, that's fucking bullshit. We never intended to do <laughs> Like, that's basically how it's going every time. <laughs> okay, so let me get the information out and then we can talk about it real fast. So, May 24th, 2016, Overwatch will be officially released for the PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. If you pre-order before April 29th, you will be able to play from May 3rd. Well, I was going to say through 4th, so it's May 3rd and 4th. You will be a, like, two-day head start for the beta, or the open beta. And then on the 5th, it will just be open for everybody for four days. That's it. So if you pre-order, you get third through the ninth, so you get seven days. Otherwise, you only get four, and all you got to do is download or whatever. If you've already pre-ordered and you're not in beta, all you got to do is wait and hope. If you did buy it from Walmart or something like that, apparently Blizzard is going to go out and, or he is, they have, he, they have already uh, established a connection with retailers to give you a code and then you input that in xbox or whatever you're playing on and you'll be able to play actually two codes right you get one for yourself and one for your friend i get i think which is oh yeah nice. okay so if you pre-order i forgot about that part you do get a plus one on the invite oh. black tie correct me if i'm wrong on this information but i think if you're in beta now but i haven't pre-ordered you won't get to play during that pre-order weekend too that's yeah. No. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? We, we we need to pre-order uh, otherwise we won't be in the open beta. So if we don't pre-order, we basically just like they just shut it off for us for a week. Yes. Yeah. I already pre-ordered, so. <laughs> yep. Um all right. But other than that, what do you guys think? Do you get did you guys really expect it to come out late June? Did you expect it to come out earlier? Uh I think we're all kind of expecting it to be a little bit earlier than June. Um, so, I don't know. To me, that wasn't a big surprise. What I am kind of surprised is it's an open beta weekend. Um, you know, kind of along the lines of like a Battlefront type open beta weekend type thing. And it's interesting that Kaplan framed it as people want to try a product before they buy it. Like he kind of said that in the, in the yeah. uh, talk. So, he's kind of like realizing that... Um, there's a certain amount of people that want their betas this way, and I guess he's trying to make them happy by giving yeah. them the, uh, the giving demo them a little beta. yeah the demo beta like Star Wars and the Division did. Yeah. And depending on how I worded, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I said there will never be a fully open sign up and download beta. And technically, even though it's four days, it still does count. So I might have lost. Um, might have lost that. I, it's not a bet, but prediction. Wait, I've lost know. all three of my bets, and no one's called me out yet. So, <laughs> oh, oh, until someone calls me out, I'm not. I don't doing know that. if people want to watch you eat. I don't some banana assholes and <laughs> toenails. Yeah. Yeah. Toenails. But I feel like me getting eggs thrown at me might be a decent video. Um, other than that, I think it's getting a little bit surreal because. What we started talking just after BlizzCon, all three of us, and then we first episode like it was around Thanksgiving, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it's uh, all happening. Yeah, yeah. And in about two months, in a week, two weeks, two months, yeah. two weeks, Overwatch will finally be out. Yeah. And we'll, we'll no longer be special because we're in the beta. True. It's also, <laughs> currently it's like, okay, so I have some friends who will probably play it on PS4, but there's like, there's obviously some that will play it on PC, and there's this one extra code I get. It's like, okay, whose life am I going to fuck up with this code? <laughs> like, like a dealer, like, hey, try this vial here, and then uh, the only thing I'm like, hoping, the only thing I hope doesn't happen is like G2A selling codes, but I know it is going to happen. Yeah, they actually are already. Uh, like, I looked it up. And there's actually sites cheaper than G2A already, so. That's gray is uh, like gray. How can they sell beta codes already if there's no if there's not an actual like Blizzard said there's no code right now. Oh, you mean the extra code? Okay, yeah, that, yeah. that is a good. Uh, oh, I didn't even think about this. Yeah, could be because that that happened for Dota too, but it got to the point for Dota where it was just like you could just add a bot on Steam and they would just send you a Dota code, like because Valve started to just like they had buckets of of beta codes that they were just like handing out to people the thing is like I mean, this is a special happened. yeah it's a special situation because you're getting like what three or four days more x's and then if you sell your extra code for these three or four more days okay well, how much can it cost like a dollar or something hey man that's a mcdouble or something that's a, <laughs> that's a arizona iced tea that's uh yeah. Bag of chips. I don't know what costs. What costs a dollar? Like the cart that you pull and push into the. I oh, know that it doesn't actually cost a dollar. <laughs> the cart that you push into what? In, into the shop. Don't you I have don't like? I don't no, think that costs oh, anything. Oh, you don't have that, right? Like, because, wait, you guys oh, have yeah. to pay for shopping carts? Yeah, because people wouldn't bring them back. <laughs> they would steal them. <laughs> I mean, like, if I'm a la lazy cunt, I'm just going to take the shopping cart at home, leave it in front of my house, and, you know, basically happen. It's also why you don't see homeless people driving them here. Uh -huh. like, yeah. Yeah, that's big in the States, uh, homeless people. Each one has at least two or three carts to their name, you know. Or like, I mean, bubble, like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys, man, he's got tons of carts. <laughs> I mean, ba basically, all our German culture is basically... Uh, you know, based around that we are all golden retrievers and like you you get money for, you know, recycling stuff like bottles and we get that in Michigan. We get Yeah, it depends on the state, right? But there's actually like there's a lot of uh retired uh older people that go around and just collect them. That's like what it, bums here do. <laughs> it's not even bums, it's just old people. <laughs> It's like nice outside. They connect with the people there, you know, driving <laughs> the city. Nice Just experience. going through garbage cans, finding bottles. Yeah, because like the minimum uh, retirement cost you get here, payment that you get here is not enough to All right. uh, survive Dep on it. Okay. Depressing route. Anyways, um, besides recycling and bums, <sighs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything much to talk about this. It's cool that the information is out, but nothing crazy, I guess. So the next up on the ticket would be uh, Google Me. Google Me just got picked up by Cloud9. So see if there's anything, blah, blah. They just announced some of the stuff that they've won. And the final roster is going to be Kai Kai, Grego, Sure for Adam. I still think that's a dumb name. Reaver and Debet. Now, when I say final roster, I just mean current updated. Obviously, they can trade and do whatever, cut contracts, depending on exactly how the contract is worded. But that's cool. Uh, I like that Google Me is getting noticed and they're getting a official, you know, like banner that everyone knows. Cloud9. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting that uh, Cloud9 went with them, mm -hmm. um, because normally you have like a a pretty deep history of Cloud9 going also not only for the best players but also for the marketable players. You see that in CS, 
You see that to an extent in League of Legends, where they stick to marketable players for longer periods of time that build their brand. Uh, so they also have a lo lot of uh, loyalty to, um, have, to their they players. They have Mango and Smash, and they used to have... Exactly. They used to have people like EE and I think AOI 2000 was Cloud9. Recent, not recently, but like last year. A couple of people who were like known to create content and, or be like popular people. Yeah, and that's basically not as much the case with Cloud9. And actually, as you saw in the announcement thread on the subreddit, like there's apparently a couple of dicks in there. Like, uh, yeah, dude. Fuck that guy. He said one bad thing and he's a dick. <laughs> I've never said anything bad in my life. I mean, <laughs> the only thing I was offended by is that he actually thinks they're the best team in the world. That's the only offense I take, because it's obviously not true, but... They're number one NA. Uh, which is basically the world, right? Yeah, dude, we're the US. Bro. Let's go. Why Let's do you think go. it's called North and South America? Or, or Super Bowl, well, you know? What? What, is, basically... wait, what, is, what does Super Bowl have to do with anything? Well, they, the best football team in the world. No, never mind. Just America. But it's it's like the, you know, do, basically do other, in the universe. This is going to be super ignorant, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Do other countries really play that much football? Not as good, obviously. But they're, like there's stuff played in the stadium, for instance, in my uh, city. And yeah, like 10,000 people in attendance. So not big, but not small. And obviously, they're not playing. Like, it was bigger a, couple, a, a while ago. Like, 10 yeah. years ago, they actually went the American route. Like, going there was actually, like, also happening. You know, it was basically what you imagine it in America to be. Like, there were um, stuff for children. Then, like, a, what, it's called, what is it called? Turning bull or something? Where you bull ride? Oh, like, like a, yeah, machine. the bull ride machine. Yeah. yeah, and stuff like this. And American food and stuff. So it was really, you know, culturally enriched, but but nowadays they don't do that as much anymore. Like the team in my city, he's uh, was called Rhine Fire because it's on the Rhine and it's fire. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So my question is: Is why dot gg? Uh huh. Is that like their website? So. It's easier that way, or yeah, that's the website. Like apparently, everyone is going the GG route, and it's basically an eSport thing, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, the official site is also cloud9.gg. So we should get a watchpoint.gg. Yep. There we go. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, can, can it be when we get watchpoint.gg? Can it be? It's already w gone. It's already it... gone. Somebody already took it now. Well, I would like it to be wp.gg. How about that? That'd be kind of cool. Well played, GG. Yeah. I I wish it would be GG well played. Well, yeah. Yeah. The thing Anyways. is, yeah. Let, let's maybe talk a little bit about this the roster because I think. Um, okay, despite them being dicks, that uh, apparently that's not true for sure. Sure for, and I have to. I have to um, admit, I haven't actually watched too many streams of his, which I probably should, because watching him in tournaments, he's one of the three or four players I actually consider star players right now. The only in, person uh, that sticks yeah. out to me is Kai Kai. That's the only name that I recognize. Because of the Hanzo play, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kai Kai is probably the third best player on that team. Um, far and away, Shofo. Like, he's mm -hmm. a god Genji, basically. Can easily... Like, he... He's on le on the level uh, of Pluppy, I guess. Um, maybe a little bit down. But if if I'm grouping them, then there's an S tier of players, and Shofor, um, uh, Pluppy is in there. Then Valutaha, and you could argue Mendo. But um, yeah, and like great signing. If he's also a nice person, I can only imagine he's going to blow up. And mm -hmm. if you can bind like such a player to your brand, because I know that he was uh, actually approached by a lot of teams, um, and yeah, that's uh, that's a good move by Clyde Nine. I think um, like the contracts aren't aren't probably too binding, so if they need to make roster changes, it's not going to be a huge issue, or at least I can't imagine that being the case. Mm -hmm. Um, I've actually heard about problems that other organizations didn't want to pay, um, you know, transfer fees. 
because some players actually stupidly also bound themselves already bound themselves to uh, an organization. Yeah. Not that they're well known, but uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, to a degree, I think like if there's a doubt on anyone's mind that these players are not going to be around, that's impossible for sure. For like, unless like a mean bus comes around the corner and today <laughs> tomorrow he loses two hands. He's going to be one of the top players for at least the first year. Like, you're getting, uh, the, no. you're letting Reddit get to you. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, not going to happen. Okay. Uh. So continuing on just with the topics that we have at hand, another big uh, team is kind of being signed. Is far, correct me if I'm wrong. There is no definite answer for IDDQD, right? It's just sure. they're it's up in the air right now. Yeah, but. I mean, we can maybe say for sure it might be one. Okay, so the discussion is the article basically talks about, I don't know if it's an article, it's a post, basically talks about that they have, that IEDQD, uh, obviously one of the strongest, if not the strongest team in the game, uh, has been approached by CLG and Tempo Storm, which they turned down, like it's been confirmed that they turned them down, and Team Liquid and Cloud9, have also tried to sign them, but Cloud9 already got Google Me. So Team Liquid, as far as this post goes, has not been rejected. So we could say Team Liquid is maybe up there, like with a for sure, but not obviously definite. But they also went through a roster change, which they removed Taimu and brought on Mendo Kuze? Kuzai? Yeah, I was just no call him Mendo. Like, that's some anime stuff. Mm -hmm. He yeah. previously played for SK and Reunited. Mm, yeah. And there's a little bit of drama about Too Good and his influence with that roster pick. And Yeah. I mean, like, from the, from the entire Dota thing, we know that Too Good is always someone that stands in or, you know, kind of... Uh, helps people in unfortunate situations when they're getting screwed over by esports organizations. Yeah. So, for instance, it was with the casters, right? But it was also back in the day. He was all, all always um, involved. If someone asked him, "Can you, yeah, like, look at my contract? Is this fair? What should I ask for?" He would yeah. always, yeah, obviously not from a legal standpoint, but just having the, um, experience. the experience, he could just uh, tell you if that's if because back in the day. For instance, in WoW, there was still organizations taking 50% or uh, like between 30 and 50% from the uh, winning check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just screwing the over players. Yeah. While others were providing salary and nothing, basically. E.g., like players were flown, flew, also flown out to all the tournaments, which was also a huge problem. Yeah. When, when, uh, when teams from, uh, from other organizations where, where there was no money for them to go to. Even though they were maybe the best team in the world, that's obviously not a situation you want to be in. I think that's also not the reality of what esports is currently. But that yeah. used to be an issue, right? Yeah. So, and yeah, and too good actually. So, for instance, with uh, with Ch 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 Chipsa Jin, he has a little bit of history. He was obviously like in a position for uh, the game he played before. Ch uh, Chipsa Jin actually won DreamHack 2011 for uh, Bloodline Champions. During the time, I think Too Good was um, the esports manager. I think it was called. Yeah. And obviously, there's like if Too Good likes a player, he will like him for a while. And that obviously also ha happened with Mendo. Yeah. And like, I can't fault him for sticking to him because uh, Chipsogen is honestly one of the best supports in the game right now. And it's like if you look like IDD Cutie, okay, you, you, okay, you start probably from the bottom. Coco, sick tank. Harry Hook, sick. Then Internet Hawk plays everything on an above average level. Then Chipsogen, probably the best um, uh, Zenyatta and in general just overall great support. And then you have the gods, dude, like Pluppy and Mandukusai. Jesus Christ, dude. Like they have firepower out of their butts. That's so you think, that, you think that this change is A, good, and B, will just secure them their position as top dogs you don't think it's going to affect their performance you think it's going to 
not well, I guess you can't help their performance because you can't be better than one, but yeah. The thing is, obviously, the question you have to ask is, is Mendel better than T Temu? Yeah. And that's hard to say because I feel like Pluppy and Mendo also play a lot of the same characters, but maybe in scrims that has been figured out because uh, Temu was actually almost exclusively playing McCree, even though he had shown some uh, diversity, like in his first team, which he played actually with the author of the article, Mitchell played with Temu in his first team, which was Kick Esports, and he was playing Mercy in that team. And then he gets to the best team in the world, basically, and plays McCree, right? So you see there's some FPS mechanics that weren't used and utilized. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is, I, I wonder if there's more diversity in him than just McCree, or if it was just, you know, that was basically EU meta, meta, meta for all of Beta Phase 2, basically. So maybe they felt like they had to. But I think, like, according to the comments also by him, it was mostly that they didn't have chemistry and he was apparently not working out in the team environment. And that's why they made the switch. And all, the, the problem I have a little bit with Mendo is that he's so young. He's 17, I think. And you have to wonder, once the tournament scene starts up, how, like, that's also how do players react to the tournament, uh, going to offline events, right? Yeah. Which we will ho hopefully have, but... Yeah, uh, so far, like online, in terms of online play, that's almost as close to a dream team you will get into in Europe because, you, like, Valutaha is not going to create reunited, a play team he has been playing for almost half a de decade with, I think. So, like, it's, it's almost impossible to make a better European team than what they currently are playing with, basically. All right. Yeah. Um, I would like. I mean, as much as I don't want to see everything, you know, become tags again, I like the teams that are, like, on their own, doing it for just them and, like, all that stuff. I really want to see a lot of these teams get signed so that they can get paid and so they yep. can get, you know, like, money and so that they're not just doing this hoping and hoping that they'll, they'll be able to play and survive. I like that Cloud9 is picking up Google Me, and I like that probably Liquid is looking at IDD Cutie. And it's funny because Liquid isn't that strong of a brand in most games. And if they pick up IDD Cutie, they'll be the strongest brand in this game. Yeah, they might be. I mean, there's, there's like, okay, Team Liquid is pretty big in League, for instance. I guess. I, I don't follow League that much. But yeah. yeah. StarCraft, too. Yeah, obviously. That's where they come from. Uh, what, what's StarCraft nowadays, right? <laughs> well, know? yeah. No, no. <laughs> but I think, like in in Smash, Liquid Ken he just doesn't play. Uh, Armada is Alliance, and TSM is Leffen. Yeah. So nothing in Smash, and then for Dota, Liquid. I don't even know if they've made it to like a, a finals of a TI in the last couple of years. Yeah. So yeah, in general, it would be I think a pretty great pickup. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, I wonder, like, okay, since, because back in the day, Liquids used to be a pretty much a special organization back in the StarCraft days, right? Yeah. They were also not picking up people for their skills, but more for the personality and how they are ambassadors for the game, which is also basically why they st stuck around with players like uh, uh, the little one or something, TLO, right? Mm -hmm. Um they're just nice people and great, great uh, personalities to have in your esports team. And if you look at what uh, what's paying your bills, it's people watching your uh, players, right? Obviously, success helps greatly with that. And it's a viable um, business strategy to go for the best teams. But it's not, not the, uh, the only way. Nowadays, since they actually merged with a, a LOL team, a league team, um, Curse, um, I think it has opened up their recruitment strategy a little bit. Wait, which, back up. Curse and Liquid joined? Like, they're one brand? Uh, I'm not sure if the Curse brand is the same, or... No, nah, I think Curse, like, the site is not, but the team owner went over and basically had one of the... Like, it was a team that always made fourth. That's kind of a meme in the League community. Yeah. And it was, a like... 
they they didn't they weren't just picked up but the owner of the uh, league team actually made it so that he was the co-owner now of team liquid oh. because he had such marketing power behind it so he owns team. two brands they're not no no he, he's not in curse anymore like the oh. the guy that has curse the curse uh, you know organization you know that's not the person who was owning the team basically oh it's okay. a pretty it's pretty strange um but yeah in general what what this all means is it's not impossible for a team that obviously had some internal struggles um and hasn't had like the most outgoing personalities like Ploppy, okay Ploppy is actually uh, a legit streamer yeah you, you, but uh, mendo also i guess but the others are basically you know not icons of the uh, community and so there's no barrier anymore where Team Liquid just invites these players that are just, you know, beacons. But uh, they just... I can see them easily picking up that team. Question. Not to call them out. Um, what, where is Siegel? What is he doing? Like, as far as... Is he... I'm trying to look right now while I'm asking you the question. But is he on a team currently? He's playing with Mixup. And it's basically the team like that used to be not Enigma minus the guys he had no chemistry with. So, okay. um, like the most success. Okay, in the first week they actually won the tournament, I guess. But then the most success they actually had when they switched out their support player Harblu, uh, for Hablu, and that was his medic in TF2 too. So there was obviously some synergy that he's in the team. Um, uh, then there is uh, there's one more player uh, that's that used to be oh yeah obviously Enigma mm -hmm. is in that team but yeah I th think this lineup is not as stable and it looks like they're getting third and fourth in a couple of these they're not yeah they they lost IOD Cutie they lost to Google Me and they lost to Reunited so yeah that, just that team isn't going anywhere and. Unless they're making big roster changes, and you have to wonder how, like, if the, maybe, uh, you know, talent is going to be picked up by, uh, you know, other teams. Is has Star done anything? I don't I think, think he's interested in the thing. Yep. professional. Yeah. So both Star and Germa, they were on the other podcast, uh, the overview, I think it's called, with uh, Chan Man. Mm -hmm. And they, he actually, like, they discontinued their host position because they weren't sure they were going to be involved in the scene uh, exclusively or even spending too much time on it. So it didn't make sense for them. That's why they actually got uh, Fish Sticks and Shade on now. But, um, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, they're not really competing anymore. I mean, he's playing it time, from time to time, I think, but not really exclusively. I've actually seen him, him more... Play more TF2 than Overwatch. Hmm. Weird. All right, just random thoughts I had. Um, so the final, the final information. We're not going to go over too much competitive, just because we don't want that discussion a to get stale as far as winners and losers. We're going to let the results kind of add up a bit, and then we could talk about um, if IDD Cutie and Google Me have really been taking any changes. Um, but we're going to talk about, so last week we did have Faction on. So thank you again, Faction, for, you know, coming on, talking with us. It was actually a really fun episode. But he did post a article today about the conundrum that we did talk a little bit about, if I do remember, last week, which is, so there tends to be a snowball effect in games where if our comp is better than the opposite comp, we're going to kill them and we're going to get ultimate charges. And they have to make a decision, well, okay, do we swap heroes and lose probably, if they died first, maybe 10 to 20, if max 30, 40% of their ultimate? Or do they keep kind of ramming their head into the wall and hopefully they can break and they don't have to lose those percents? And it seems like whenever one team gets that edge and forces the other team to swap, it can cause a snowball effect will just be like so much percentage lost in their ultimates and it kind of loses the game. So the discussion is how it should be handled. Is it a problem? Um, 
and any opinions on, you know, just the situation overall. I think uh, Faction wrote a pretty good article and gave some good suggestions as to how to fix it. They're mm-hmm. realistic. Um, to me, the problem is the strength of ultimates, how strong they are, and how they, they just, by their nature, they change a match. Um, part of me wants to think that maybe um, the meta can change around this. Like, you can pick characters that are specifically good for for shutting down certain ultimates maybe but i don't know if the characters are really that the ultimates are so strong that like you can't really count on a diva to like nullify you know certain ultimates or or whatever you might pick um so i don't know i think blizzard needs to do something to keep the game more exciting or as exciting as as it should be I do have to say, I feel like I'm being a little bit of, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll play it up a bit as far as Devil's Advocate goes, but while ultimates are strong, coming from a MOBA mindset and less of an FPS, it feels natural to me as far as the ultimates being like huge game changers. The only thing that's different, obviously, is the charging. So like getting the ultimate rather than it being on a timer. Um, so I don't know if, I mean, yeah, obviously adjustments can be made to the power. I'm not saying it's perfect, but as far as just like an ultimate completely wiping out a team, if it's geared up like a black hole into a Hanzo ult and the whole team dies or like, you know, a Lucio ult on top of a Lucio ult to hold a capture point at the last, like during overtime, something like that, that makes sense to me. That doesn't, it doesn't seem overpowered. It doesn't seem... Like, it's a huge problem. But obviously, in an FPS, it's completely different. But it's not a solid FPS. It's not, like, you know, guns only. There's obviously these extra powers. Excuse me. There's extra powers in the game for a reason. I guess I'll speak from a player's point of view from an FPS. Um, To me, you know, you win a game by shooting better, getting better position, or having better tactics. And when an ultimate can beat that it's kind of disheartening um i see i can see the moba standpoint like that's part of the strategy but to a fps kind of guy like me it's it's kind of a bummer to know that like you know um i can be like a really good shooter and i can still not beat someone pushing an ultimate button yeah the only question then is how do you make so you go i don't know say you're say you're playing widow and you are an excellent sniper. You're hot, or you're, what's his name? I don't care. Anyways. Maya Kuni? No, I was going to, some uh, CSGO player played for a couple weeks, okay. and he was amazing at the sniper position. Anyways, and you take out three people, and then Mercy flies over and reses them. And you're reloading, and you can't get that shot off, and they run away. And you feel like, what the hell? I'm an amazing shot. I took out three people. Why aren't they dead? How do you fix that? How do you make that better for the person who has that solid aim without taking anything away from that Mercy who did her job and helped her team? I guess that's a question for Blizzard and something they should ask as many players as possible because I'm going to have one answer, and that answer is probably not going to be what a lot of people would want to hear or would find fun because I have a different subjective experience than like a lot of other players. For me, it would be saying... Ultimates charge exceedingly slowly, and they're very, very weak. Um, they're almost like like a third ability that, that's just slightly more powerful than an ability. But that's <laughs> like completely changing the game at that point. Yeah. You know? And I'm yeah. Ask, basically asking for a different game at that point. Yeah, I, I actually thought about this uh, issue as well, and we, I brought up BLC before, and uh, they basically have the same system. You damage someone, you heal others, and you gain your ultimate. But what the t- uh, thing did, in order to not make it too binary, that if someone has an ultimate up, you're just going to die, it's, um, they are, uh, they're called Axe abilities. And basically, you can use 30% of your ult charge, or sometimes more, sometimes less, I think. Not sure if it's individual. And it enhances one ability of your toolkit, so it's like a mini ultimate, basically. So it's it's like Street Fighter. Okay, I've never played that, dude. You've never played Street Fighter? 
No, no, no. Okay, anyways, yeah, for fighting game people and in Mortal Kombat, so what you can do is you have your ultimate bar charged up and you can take chunks out of it to just make a, a move more powerful. So you throw your your trap from junk right out and it does more damage and holds them longer or yeah. you know I, I don't know mercy's mercy's boost gives her uh gives the target more damage something to that effect yeah but That's then a- how would you use that for people who just use utility stuff like you going to make widows grapple lower cooldown or Maybe you just boost, for instance, for a certain amount of time, hit her zoom charges quicker or something. Yeah. Or um, it does more damage. Obviously, you don't want to make it like a way that you just, oh, 30% activate, 30% yeah. activate, right? So it what... should feel like a legitimate situ- situation where you're like, oh, they have your, their ultimate, and I just switched from a character, and I only have 30%. Guess I'm throwing that in there, so I maybe have a chance uh, to outskill my opponent and win the team fight. Yeah. You know? so. Vulture, you were saying something? Um, what game did you say takes this? does this approach, Yeska? Uh, Bloodline Champions. Bloodline Champions. I haven't played that. Is there an ultimate? Also an ultimate that you can use yep. with it? Okay, so you both can charge and you can save an ultimate. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's a, like a it, it makes it not as binary and I mean the problem is um I think it's a huge part of the fun experience that you get rewarded for doing something well and therefore get, getting your ultimate and it always like if you have your ultimate it always feels nice, right? Mm-hmm. You've like grinded out something and now you kind of want to use it. Yeah. And it also sucks sit, sitting on an ultimate for a long time, I feel like. Or you okay. die and don't get it off, and then you're like, oh, shit, should I switch characters? Oh, no, I have an ultimate. I can't, but I'm playing a character that's not doing well. And so you just run out, use your ultimate, and die again and waste another five seconds. Yeah. I guess but to that, the... that point of feeling good, there was a Reddit thread that um, that said that it kind of stinks to play Symmetra now because she doesn't charge when her teleport is up. And I kind of have to agree with that. That does suck. And I kind of... And yeah. it does kind of feel good charging an ultimate, I should say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, that's what I meant when I when that came out and we read that in the patch notes, I thought that that was really dumb because everyone else can do it. So, and I mean, like, D.Va can do it twice, technically. But obviously it would be overpowered if she could just teleport or teleport or teleport her over and over again. And so... I think Blizzard definitely has to take a look at specific hero like um, mechanics as far as charging or stuff like that that they have implemented in Diva and Symmetra. But I, I guess obviously I don't have the answer because I'm not a game designer. But it does feel weird. Yeah, I think. The, yeah, go ahead. In the other discussion, as far as so we're not, you know, circling around that topic too much, would be how do you feel about I I brought it up. I don't know if he had previously thought about it, but the stance of having like a third of your ultimate when you switch characters. Would that solve anything? Maybe. Hmm. It, he did have a concern that you, you know, you could use one character to charge an ultimate switch to someone else. That has a more powerful ultimate that charges slower, and you know you could game that way, but it could possibly be an answer. Yeah, yeah one third is is like I I'm not sure it it lessens the blow, but it doesn't erase the problem completely, right? Yeah, it just yeah. The problem is honestly at this point it's very hard to come up with a solution, and I feel like the system is sort of in a corner, and we need a very smart solution to get out of it. Right, whatever suggestion I can come up with, which obviously also not a game designer, but it feels all like it can either be this exploited or doesn't feel good or I don't know. Like the current system is probably the most fun in a way, yeah, because because of this reward factor. Yeah, if it was on time, well, might as well stand in my base and wait mm. for my ultimate to be up, right? So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a little bit of a problem, and I I think it's 
too big of a problem to fix just with simple tweaks, but more like like a system I I explained basically with the X abilities, but that takes a long, long time to fix and balance. Basically changes the entire core of these characters. You would have to think about 21 different, you know, mini ultimates or something, possibly more yeah. if you want to have two on one character. Maybe you want to introduce a new key bind for those. So I don't know. It's um, that's that's way too much, right? And small fixes are very, very hard to make a good solution for. And I think we're going to actually be in a situation where we just lessen the blow. Is is it that big of a problem to where we're going to find ourselves in a situation that it it needs to be changed? dramatically or can it go through changes in its current sit like its current adaptation that we will be able to you know stop the snowball effect a little bit or i don't know i i guess you know like stop the yeah i guess it's just a snowball effect i was gonna say maybe something like so in dota what they implemented was like a rubber banding effect which it, at first was horrible but if you killed someone, let's say someone was on fire and you killed them, what if you got more of an ultimate charge? So huh. if the other team is doing super well and you kill that person who's on fire, you're effectively outperforming, so you should get a reward for that. Maybe. It would kind of like incentivize, disincentivize uh, support play, I guess. And playing well, too. Like, I'm yeah. if I'm almost on fire... I guess I'm going to let this guy peek the corner instead of myself in mm -hmm. order to not be on fire and not play well, right? I, actually, in like the all, all the other effects are very appealing actually to me. Like very good uh, idea. The problem is it, there's always some way to exploit exploit it, and mm -hmm. I think we are going to like m maybe m at the moment it's not a, as big of a problem because I'm I'm close to having an aneurysm when I'm watching some of these games where because. Of the article, I was actually watching if uh, Faction had a point and wanted to look at if, if that actually actualizes in, in the game, you know, the, the issue. It yeah. absolutely does. But at the same time, like how many people I actually see peeking into the door, like when they're on defense, which takes 40 seconds to run there. I'm a, like peeking with Winston, I guess I'm going to see which character the offense is going to take. Oh, they're all trolling Torbjorn. I got no information, and I gave them the information that I'm uh, Winston. <laughs> Dude, oh, it's so stupid. But, like, yeah, okay, down the line, I think we I actually thought about, like, why does the offense, and I think I've seen some uh, teams actually experiment with, uh, experiment with this. It's certainly worth it. Have a tracer run out as offense, not die, just scout three seconds, teleports back into the base, Switches character has the information of like three, four core characters uh, the opponent, the defense picked, and then just um, you know they just counter pick them, yeah, right. And okay, then then you can say okay we can counter strat that by staying back. Okay, then they might start out running out of the gates right away, right. It feels all this like he said rock paper scissor. It's a l l little less. Uh, severe version than rock paper scissor, yeah. which I guess is a s game of skill, in a way. You know, there's actually people that have tournaments in rock paper scissor. It's just not very fun. Not exciting to watch either. I don't want to watch a tracer boop itself up to the line and say like, "Oh, what are you doing, peeky boo?" and then run away. You know, I don't want, that doesn't. That's not fun to watch. I mean, in the in terms of RNG, I guess. You have the entire uh, Hearthstone audience disagreeing with you because mm -hmm. that's. A lot of fun. That's the game. RN Jesus. I have an idea. I'm wondering if um, if they create a couple characters that either sap or remove ultimate. That might be a way to... If you're down like ultimates and you just know it, you could be like, okay, I'm going to pull this character that can, that can suck ultimates or something like that. It might be a roundabout way of fixing it. Then that character would just be mandatory, wouldn't it? Maybe yeah. no. If you're if you're down, yes. If you're not, if you're up, why would you? I guess you could pick yeah, it yeah. to like sap their their stuff, but they're going to be down anyway. So why are you going to pick a sapper to sap what's probably not going to be there? Yeah. 
I mean, it's it's yeah. Just call Again, it underdog or something. <laughs> Just have it a dog that flies around sucking away uh, ultimates. <laughs> yeah, I was clean. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I guess we don't have the answer for it, but. I'm just trying to figure out if it's that big of a problem, like they're writing themselves into a fucking corner here and it's just going to like cave in on itself or it's something that'll, you know, everyone doesn't like and could be changed, but we can learn to live with with some nice balance tweaks because they're not at the point where they can overhaul the entire system. Yep. They would no they're way. past that. They're past the point of no return. They got a release date, everything like that. So yep. I, have, I have three hopes. I have hopes that the little changes fix it i have hopes that the meta fixes it and i have hopes that the tournament organizers have a fix for it uh, yeah. between those three i think it'll be sussed out somehow for t competitive play do they have a setting in custom games to change ultimate charge rates yes okay yeah. I, mean, I mean what if uh, is that stupid yeah maybe it's stupid but i thought about like what if you don't allow for the first minute to anyone charge ultimates. So hmm. the first couple of battles aren't, you know, as deciding and uh, as snowball-y. But I, that just, just delays the problem then again, yeah. right? I don't know. It's this fine line of, like, what I feel like is going on is FPS versus, like, the MOBA-style skill set. And it's, like, them just clashing heads. And they're going to have to find, like, a common ground to where one doesn't affect the other too much and so they're not like taking away from people who are super good at aiming and they're also not taking away from people who are super strategic with you know landing this ability on top of this ability on top of this ability and like yeah. organizing their team and like getting strategically positioned yeah i mean it's also i guess you could fix it by not making as it as rock paper scissor in the sense that you don't have hard counters for certain champions but then you're you can creating these characters that are basically all the same, right? Yeah. It's not real character. We saw how that went with difference. WoW. So. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I don't know. Like, it's it's like whatever lever you pull, if I feel like it's stuck and sticky, and you know, it's uh, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Maybe that's just the reality of the situation. Like mm -hmm. for pub play, it's not a problem. Uh, for competitive play, yeah. I mean, it kind of sucks when you when you feel discouraged. Or, like, you know, the the in league they actually have uh, had this for a while, where the enemy team after ten minutes they were far down, especially on the Korean server. They would say, "Okay, GG, open mid," and then people would just p push through the middle for an easy win because you couldn't, uh, you know, uh, you couldn't surrender before twenty minutes. Exactly. Yeah, and in Overwatch, my God. Like, like I'm not I'm not looking forward to the second team fight if I got shit on the first team fight, especially if the guy doing the shitting is the guy who has the power for ultimate and knows how to use it. It's like yeah, okay. I mean, I guess maybe I'm in the wrong as far as like it, there are situations where if you lose and you're down too much, you're obviously going to lose it to like an extreme extent. But at the same time, I'm still of the mindset, especially from Dota that doesn't have a surrender button. People just give up for no reason. They die, they're done. That's it. They have such low... Uh, I, I can't think of the word, but like they can't press on and they can't try to make that upset and turn the tables happen. And if it is just the system that won't allow it, then I guess yes, but... I really hope there's not a surrender button in Overwatch. I mean, the games are too short anyways. It doesn't need to be one, but... What if the first character you pick already has an ultimate? Oh, God. Mm. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. That might be insane. Uh, maybe. Um... Just, the first fight would just be absolutely ridiculous. Everyone obviously. just goes divas and just throws yeah. mechs at each other. Yeah, or like all the Hanzos. There's just five dragons flying down the entire like <laughs> map. You know? Okay, that's retarded. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I thought, like, yeah, like in my head, it all makes sense. For instance, Lucio would use his ultimate, and then for the duration of the ultimate, he's not going to generate any ultimate charge. So when he dies, he probably hasn't done too much with his, uh, his ultimate charge, and the first fight would 
kind of sort of be similar and it would also reward people like conserving their ultimates during team fights. But yeah, five 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 Hanzo directs actually convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean also Zarya into Hanzo also right out of the uh, just attack our defense is just like waiting at the door and just like three Zarya, three dragons go out. <laughs> whole yeah, team just dies. Yeah. It's it's the meta game of uh, who uses their the spawning points the best to hide yeah. in the locations where nobody shoots at their, their <laughs> 20 ultimates. Like this this spot on the roof of Dorado is very safe. <laughs> I want to get a game. It's just all ultimates, like 100% charged all the time. And it's just like Hanzos, just dragons. That's their main fight. They just now. shoot dragons like this. Roar, <laughs> roar, roar. Yeah. <laughs> will win. Yeah. No, nah, that's stupid, obviously. No, okay. but, yeah, it's it's very hard, right? Yeah. Is there anything else going on as far as the game goes? Uh, have you noticed anything as far as? Oh, there was a beta wave. Yeah. So if yeah. you if you're, you know, mad and you haven't checked your account because Blizzard doesn't want to give you beta, check. You might have beta. I, I checked my second account. I still don't have beta on that second account. I had a long time friend actually just get beta, and I'm gonna be playing with him tonight. Uh, nice. I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's always fun. I can't I can't wait until I can get like, you know, my brother and all my friends in and so it's it's less of this like random ass people, which those are fun to play with, you know. You guys the times that we've played are fun, but once you get like people who don't take the game so seriously and you try to get them, you know, you give them that little like, "Oh, you want to play Overwatch?" It's, you know, it's fun. It's open beta. And then you get them in and they get locked into it. When you get like a huge group, because I do one thing I am trying to organize. This is kind of, I guess, a pre-plug. I'm trying to organize a, uh, I'll call it backyard style, like, or schoolyard style. So you get 12 people and two captains and we just throw together like a short bracket and you just pick teams from random people and see how they do. And it seems kind of dumb because you're horribly organized, but it's just for fun. So it's something I do want to do because it's a lot special. Like in Dota, when we did in houses is what we call them. And it's just like a huge guild and you just get, you know, 10 people together and just play pickup games. It's like pickup basketball. Yeah. But when you get that community rolling, so like if we got, you know, anybody that's subscribed to us or anybody in like the watch point community, if they have like a guild system or something, that'd be super cool to just be like, all right, guys, it's Saturday. We're going to throw up a pickup game. You know, anybody want to play? And it gets like a community going and like a bunch of people that like to play together. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I would have loved in general. I, I hope there's an update on this whole social uh, side yeah. of the game. Like I'm, I keep repeating myself, but the chat system is still awful. Yeah, it's still barely usable. Like it's it's a shame if I'm if I want to add someone to my game, I always ask like for their Steam ID, so I can actually message them on the messenger that they're actually using because it's actually usable. It's stupid, right? I and it, it's, that's not how you're you're promoting your uh, your platform either. Right? No. Here's another way that this has been coming up for me a lot. So I'll get like a little team together after playing like alone, and we get like three or four or five guys. All right. Who has a uh, who has access to a, a, a uh, VoIP or like a team chat, a team speak or something? Okay, paste it in chat. Okay, I can't copy paste from chat. <laughs> I can't do anything with that address. I have to either type it in manually or I have to friend someone, have them send it to me so I can access the chat window outside of the game to copy paste. Ridiculous. And then it doesn't even save that that chat history. So like tomorrow, if I want to play with these same guys, and I'm like. I didn't save it as a bookmark. I have to be like, oh, can you send me, be a total dick and be like, can you send me that link again? Because it closed, it's gone forever, I can't access it. I'm used to Steam where I can just click on their name and, you know, the history is there for at least a day or so. What happened to Blizzard's, remember when they announced, you know, oh, we're going to have voice over IP in the game. Sweet. And then they're like, oh, by the way, everyone loves our voice over IP because we're the best and we're going to make a third party client for it for all of our Blizzard games. What happened to that? Good nice. question. Still being worked on. I mean, at this point, just like put a put a little white flag on your launcher, 
And when you click the white flag where they basically um, conceded, it links you to, to Discord. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been a couple of people that I work with. They've got actually. I found a couple of people IRL that uh, have Overwatch, and they just use Discord. It just seems like it's easier. It's free. So how how do you like how do you meet people that have Overwatch? It feels like. It's it's sort of like I go up and being I a ginger. Myself and... Okay, <laughs> but what's what's the code word for someone like? Where does justice come from? Yeah, yeah. And if they say from <laughs> above. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're in. Mm -hmm. Fill in the blank. Die blank. Die. <laughs> yep. So. Blanks never die. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, we're talking a bunch of bullshit here. So I have noticed on the on our uh, YouTube page, we are getting really close to 50 subs, which for some people is like, you know, a minute amount. But I like solid round numbers. So that's exciting. Uh, if you guys know anybody who is interested in Overwatch, just shoot us, uh, you know, share us, help us spread the word of our community that we're trying to build here help uh you know people get into discussion because that's most of what it is is just people probably don't even know that we exist just because we've never come across their path so if you know you do like the show show it to a friend it'd be cool and if you do like the show make sure you're having a discussion with us on reddit or in the comments below anything like that we always you know we sometimes we do have flamey episodes talking shit about reddit but the people who are nice and just have a real conversation we love you guys you know, we've had a couple of people come in and comment and talk with us. And, of course, people who come in and just, just like, vomit on the keyboard when they come in. But it's cool. It's nice to see everything growing. And I'm excited for when the game launches. Um, but other than that, we can start plugs. Yiska, you got anything going on? Uh, I'm actually, like, I'm still working on the thing I, I have been finishing up for the last two weeks. And mm -hmm. it's actually, like... Uh, Impacting my sleep sc schedule so much that I You're feel like I'm sick. Yeah, I'm more susceptible to colds. I've been uh, sick twice in three weeks or something, and that's not normal for me. Like I get, usually get sick once um, a year, and that's it, basically. Yeah. But nowadays it's it's a little bit harder. But yeah, I should be done next week, hopefully, and then uh, yeah, then I can think about creating some content. I guess. Okay. Volsha, you doing any uh, more analytical videos on the systems that we got going on in Overwatch? Um, I really want to, but not a lot of people that I can uh, rely on for uh, this sort of thing. Like, I've got some people that like want to do the video, and then they stop playing Overwatch, you know, two two days later, and I'm like, mm -hmm. mm, I don't, kind of don't want to like bring you into the game to like, you know, have me shoot you in the face for like 45 <laughs> minutes, you know, <laughs> just to see something that doesn't sound very fun for you, so. Yeah. I kind of put that on hold. I'm going to try to take it up uh, this week again, do some more. I want to do one on Symmetra and one on Zarya. Um, hopefully that will be coming soon. Um, this past week I've had a lot of uh, real-life stuff, too, that's been busy, so I wouldn't have had time to take care of it anyways. All right. Um, as far as myself, I have scrapped. I had a... Uh, Roadhog video that I was going to make like a compilation and I scrapped it. I did, it wasn't turning out how I liked it and I kind of just like burned myself out on the game. You're not I a good kinda, hooker, you mean? Yeah, I burned <laughs> it, dude. I burned it. I just got rid of it. Um, But no, I just kind of like burned myself out on the game for a while and I tried Black Desert and I was playing that and then I was like, MMOs are too much of a fucking time commitment for an adult. And so I just play competitive games because you can jump in and jump out. And I kind of got back into Overwatch. I've kind of been spamming it a lot more now. I've gotten over my burnout phase. And I came up with a project, which is the one, the, um, the like almost like I'll say schoolyard uh, pickup games, which I don't want to play in. I want to cast with somebody else, either one of you guys or something like that, just to start building a little bit of a community. But as far as my personal other project, I do want to make a personal opinion, analytical-ish video on every single hero. 
So I'm trying to get every hero past 10 hours so I can have actually time played with them. And barring huge changes that do happen, obviously, I'm going to have to update the videos later on. But those are the two projects I got going on right now. What's, Stream... what's your mo most played character right now? Uh, well, Roadhog before the wipe. Okay. I was up to like 12 hours with him or something. Okay. Cool. And besides that, Reinhardt and Junkrat and Winston. But I don't know. No I, don't, I don't like Winston. I really just <laughs> don't like him. I hated him. And then last week, for some reason, I just was like, all right, I'm going to play Winston for two two nights straight. Not, not Never going to change. I'm just going to play Winston. And I started really liking him. And oh. I'm going to, I'm actually got some clips saved of accomplished and i want to do just a stupid winston one you know super skill walk at people zapping them and they die you know <laughs> winston but... is the best champion for these days where you're like is this actually my hand or is that the hand of another person <laughs> like alien hand syndrome <laughs> it's actually called cool. and you're like i feel like i still should i still deserve to win and shit on them so i'm just going to you know play some winston <laughs> click some uh some on the left mouse button and just still win. Yeah. So that for those moments where you're absolutely dribbling, like Winston is awesome. Mm -hmm. Plus he's like basically invincible. You're like, oh no, I killed two people. Time to jump away and then get a health back, you know. <laughs> Almost die, pop my ultimate. Yeah. Thousand health. Uh <laughs> and the mercy behind you is like Dude, if I just stick to him, I basically have a free ultimate. <laughs> yeah, because it's like healing 500 HP and it's just... Uh, and then you get rezzed by the mercy too and it's just... <laughs> yep, I can't die. I have infinite lives. Alright, I think we're good. We can wrap it up here. So, I went over the community stuff and I hope you guys take that to heart. I hope anyone seeing this video who has got this far does subscribe and comment and all that stuff. Because it helps us out, helps you guys out, helps build our community. So, I mean, we're not going anywhere. But if you want to give us a nice, you know, like, high five, those are things that you can do for us. What, but we, could, other, what? what we could really use is, like, upvotes on our threads that we, when we share this on oh, Reddit. Oh, be, 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 very, be very, very careful with that because yeah, that's you can. actually vote degrading. Oh, know? really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, okay. can get get shadow, you can get shadow banned for so, asking for votes. So don't so, do the thing I so, implied. So don't. Do it unless you like the thread yourself. Not honestly, don't do it. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, I don't know what we're doing next week because it's St. Patty's Day for us U.S. folk. I don't know if that's a global thing. Is that what? do you guys no. St. Patty's Day in Germany? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's a it's a holiday where everyone gets goes out and just gets pissed drunk on green beer and eats ham and corned beef. Well, that's every day in Germany, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, next week's show and the following show might be a little bit messed up with the time schedule, but I don't know. We're, we're, we're still going to be here at some point during the week. We hope you guys come back. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.